Let's see what you got. Good hands, all right. He used to play a little ball, huh? Just high school. All city. I was a lot bigger in high school. You want to wear some down and outs? Sure. Okay. Here's a brand new ball, huh? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, fake inside and cut. Huh. What's that? Let's show him the bomb. All right, you got it. Hut, hut. Hey! <whistles> hey! That the ball we all chipped in for? Yeah. That's terrific. 300-yard gain, and he's still going. I don't believe it. You lost the ball. Yep, some little kid took it away from Rossi. Look, it could happen to anybody. Yeah, what are we gonna do? You in by default, okay? Sports department five, city room zip. I put in a buck for that ball. So did Billy and I. I'll make it good, I told you. Anybody live near here? Anybody with a ball? We could use ours, but my mother's out kicking field goals. Look, there's a sporting goods store over on Wilshire. I'll see if it's open. You know what's near here? Schnitzler's. Got good homemade bread, homemade sausage. You got good tap beer. Let's do it. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Sidlock covered the Tampa game. I saw it on the tube. You haven't seen it until you've read what Sidlock said about it the next day. Ed Barber, owner of the Memphis Wolves, is a tyrant of the old school. Even in childhood, Ed was against Cinderella and for the stepmother. Against Robin Hood and for the sheriff of Nottingham. Yeah, Ed Garbo's idea of a man of vision is someone who looks up to him. <laughs> it's great if you like your sports served up with stale jokes and no insight. You don't like Sidlock? He's okay. Okay? How long have you been writing sports? Seven years. Does that include time with the Fresno Green Sheet and the Simi Valley Sun? Boy, are you grouchy this morning. Look, it's just that I grew up with cereal on Sidlock for breakfast. You get older, you find out that cereal is full of preservatives and Sidlock is full of wind. Uh, you have to understand, my friend Mike here sees himself as the Ralph Nader of the sports department. I just don't like to see this paper looking the other way where sports is concerned, that's all. Wait a minute. Wasn't it just last Thursday you ran a piece on ballparks and crooked land deals? Well, that was good. It was also in Pennsylvania. It's window dressing. We don't touch anything that might offend our big schools or the home teams. You check. Every investigative story has to do with crookedness in some other city. You'd think with a city this big, we'd have some crookedness of our own. We do. Okay, Mike, come on. What's your story? No, I'd rather not go into it. Sid Lock is a buddy of yours. Buddy? Never met Sid Lock. It's just that when other guys were weaned on Walter Lippmann and Red Smith, my hero was Sid Lock. So don't badmouth him and then say, you don't want to go into it. Tell him, Mike. He won't turn you in. Off the record. Just give me one for instance. Okay. The NCAA, that's the National Collegiate Athletic Association. Thanks. Now, this happened a couple of days ago. LA University was notified that it's being investigated for recruiting violations. Football. Coach Deal? Think there's anything in it? Oh, yes, yes, I do. I've heard that there are members of the LAU football squad with falsified high school transcripts. Guys who couldn't even get into college without phony grades. Did you look into it? I was told to lay off. Who told you? My editor, Eddie Talbert. He said Sid Locke wanted the story. Then you think Sid Locke's just gonna sit on it? The story is on the spike. It's dead. We never even ran the announcement. <sighs> Eddie Talbert's a good guy, but Sid Locke has the stick and he covers up for the university. And coach deal. You come up with that story. Real proof. Said he said we'll print it. Oh, oh, no, 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 thank you. You go bump heads with Sidlock and Eddie Talbert. I can't. Yeah. If he's sitting on that story, you can bet Sidlock has his reasons. Is this still that NCAA investigation you got a wild hair about? What's it all amount to? 
it amounts to possible charges of cheating, under the table payoffs, girls, and six other kinds of recruiting violations. It, it, it's a little hard to ignore. Yeah, I guess it is. Hey, good morning, sir. Good morning, Ted. How are you doing? Hello, Eddie. Good morning, kid. Sid. Good morning, Mr. Locke. You know, I uh, had better coffee at the Indianapolis 500, and we drank it out of a crankcase. <laughs> I first read that in your column in May 1966. Always nice to meet a fan. And again in 68 and 74. Mike here's got some more dope on that NCAA investigation. Oh. Let's see it. Pardon me, where are you going with that? Well, if any of this stuff is good, I'll use it. Thanks, kid. Eddie, that's my story. Seniority, Mike. We've all got to live with it. I just called the NCAA and checked out. Could involve 20 ball players at LAU. It's a sports beef. Kick it over to Eddie Tout. That's what I'm doing. Through me? You? Yeah. Well, what are you trying to prove? I just heard we were sitting on this. It could be a big story. The NCAA is running down nine specific violations at LAU. That's our university. We ought to be on top of it. Maybe we are. Maybe we're not. I just don't want to read it first in Rolling Stone. I'll have Eddie Talbot down to the budget meeting. If he doesn't want it, it's yours. Fair? Well, I will get you Tenny sitting on it. That's possible. Every section of this newspaper gets to be its own walled city. Sports, financial, real estate. Each editor wheels and deals in his own little establishment. It's one of my biggest problems. It's lonely at the top, isn't it, sir? That uh, byline story, business executives, not leaders of men, below the fold. I think we've been featuring too much of that psychological science fiction. Mrs. Pinchon thinks it gives the front page more substance. Do you believe that, Charlie? I believe that Mrs. Pinchon is a leader of men. <laughs> Any out of Washington? Light. The president's brother has changed his mind. He is not going to be shot out of a cannon for the opening of the Alabama State Fair. Where will they ever find another man of his caliber? Mm. Hey, Eddie. Eddie. Oh, hello. Hey, hey Eddie. Charlie. Yeah. What's happening in Toy Town? Any of my favorite jocks change his agent? You hear about the Reggie Jackson trade? What? The Yankees traded Jackson? No, he traded them. <sighs> Eddie, one of uh, Lou's people tripped over this NCAA investigation. You want it? Well, we, uh, we heard about it. Let me see what you've got. Have a seat. No, thanks, Lou. All right, now, what about this arson story in Connecticut? What about it? A flame-proofing factory burned down. Yeah, Charlie, uh, I think we ought to have this. Where'd you get it, Lou? I picked it up at the health club. No, seriously, who gave you this? A friend. City desk, Donovan. Where's the story? Oh, hi, Lou. What story? The NCAA story, the investigation of the university. Did you look in sports? <laughs> of course I looked in sports. Where do you think I looked? Maybe they didn't have room for it. Check over set. It's not in over set. Then they never intended to run the story. Lou, what are you getting so fired up about? Because somebody's jerking me around down there because they didn't run the story. Because they burned my damn eggs. Lou, it's no big deal. Councilman Garber's on inspection tour of animal shelters. That's my lead story. I could have used that NCAA piece. I'll talk to Eddie Tobin, all right? All right. So I'm a pain in the butt. 
You're too easy on yourself. Is Talbert getting chewed? By Charlie Hill? When Charlie gets through working you over, you never know whether you've been assaulted or massaged. I hate to get chewed up by Charlie. Because he's kind and calm. You almost hate yourself for putting him through it. Lou. Yeah, Charlie. Uh-oh. I didn't spike the story, Lou. So what happened? It's not an overset. Where is it? Sid Locke wanted to dig into it. I gave it to him. That's his beat. Oh, so that's Sid Locke's beat, running the sports department. Low, oh, damn it. I run the sports department, not Sid Locke or you or anyone else. Uh, hey, Eddie, listen. I'll use my best judgment. I'm sorry, I was out of line. You just keep Metro straight. I've been on this paper for 12 years. You're the new boy in town. And... And one more thing. I don't like you having your spies in my department. Spies? What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Mike Kessler. Mike Kessler doesn't work for me. He works for you. Tell him that. Now, you, you run the city desk, and I run sports, and you just stay the hell out of my department. Maybe some of those other newspapers you worked on believed that you put out an exciting paper by keeping the staff at each other's throats. That does not apply here. I thought he shafted me, Charlie. I was out of line. I apologize, didn't I? <sighs> Lou, we, we've got a political situation in sports. Sid Locke has got a national rep. He's widely syndicated. He is the single biggest celebrity on this paper, and Eddie is scared to death of him. Try to remember that, will you? So you're telling me it's not Eddie Talbert, it's Sid Locke? I find that hard to believe. Then why don't you go talk to him? Well, why not? I always wanted to. Where are you going? To talk to Sid Locke. It's 3.30. By now, he's out playing golf with Jerry Ford or Farrah Fawcett. Try catching him tomorrow during his office hours. 11 to 2 at McKenna's. You know what's wrong with pro basketball? Too much body contact and lousy officiating. No. There's no cheerleaders. You are going to have to sweep up this place before you leave. You hear that I had a little scrimmage with Eddie Talbert today? Oh, yes, I heard. So now you're famous. But not popular. They call a foul on Jim Russell. Foul, that was no foul. Ticky tacky. The NCAA story is dead. Sidlock's pocket veto. Why? I mean, I don't doubt you, but why would Sidlock want to bury that story? He's part of the establishment. Los Angeles, USC, UCLA, our pros, Robert Deal, the sainted coach. We print their press releases word for word, plug for plug. Shoot, shoot, what are you waiting for? Boy, it's a lot rougher than when I played. You play basketball? Just high school. I was all state in Washington. How come you didn't play in college? French art schools don't give basketball scholarships. Mike, let me ask you. Are you sure Sid Locke is aware of recruiting violations at LAU? Of course I'm sure. I even took some of my research on it. Look. About a month ago, I interviewed Tim Blakely, LAU's All-American defensive tackle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first lineman to be drafted by the pros this year. Graduated with a 3.2 average. That's like a B plus. Pretty good. He told me other students wrote his term papers and on occasion took tests for him. After four years at LHU, he didn't think he could pass bonehead English. So after four years of college, he didn't learn anything. Oh, he learned a lot. He learned about payola, $75 a week under the table. He learned about auto leasing. He had the use of a new car. And he learned about credit cards and expense accounts. What else does a young executive need to know? Did you write that story? It was written, turned in, <laughs> spiked. Very interesting, and let's never hear about it again. Well, I'm having a talk with Sidlock tomorrow. I'll ask him about that. You're going to beard the lion in his den? Or even in McKenna's. Did you see that? Did you see that? 150000 a year and he misses two free throws. 
That column you did on Ted Williams, his last game before he went off to fight the wars, that has to be considered a classic. <laughs> Who knows? People seem to like it. Translated into 21 languages. Reprinted in Taiwan. How about that? <laughs> Sorry to bother you, Mr. Locke. The lady over there insisted. She wants an autograph. Nice to be famous. You'll find out soon enough. Huh? I can't tell you how many times I've heard your name in the last couple of days. <laughs> you know, people keep uh, asking me, uh, who is this nudnik Lou Grant? Or is it true that Lou Grant is really all thumbs? Or uh, why isn't Lou Grant alive and well in Argentina? <laughs> <laughs> now, you know the kind of question. Yeah. Thank you. To another hundred years is the dean of American sports writers. What are you looking for, Lou? Story. The NCAA inquiry? Yep. Where are you from, Lou? Minnesota. Oh, Big Ten. Are all the schools in the Big Ten lily white, Lou? Any of them? Well, I couldn't tell you firsthand. You know Coach Steele? No, not personally. Well, you'll meet him. We'll have lunch. He is Mr. Clean. I know. I did a book about him. He doesn't smoke, drink, or serve booze. You play for Coach Deal, your shirt tails are in, and your hair is short. That's why the kids call him Square Deal. Mm. Get yourself a winning quarterback in the right dress code, your father of the year. Well, let me tell you something, Lou. The Trib doesn't want to take on Coach Deal. He's a sacred cow, this year particularly. L.A.U. could go all the way. You mean we're number one? Well, maybe it is kid stuff, but to go all the way means a lot to our readers. Well, I'm with them. What's so wrong with college sports anyway? Kid plays a little ball in exchange for an education. Like Tim Blakely? Yeah, like Tim Blakely. Sid, I have to get back. Vivian, check. Oh, no, no, no check. I've made McKenna's famous in 21 languages in Taiwan. Now, if you uh, want some kind of a voucher for your expenses. Huh? No, no, that's OK. You're not running the announcement that the NCAA is investigating LAU? Not unless they come up with something substantial. It's just routine. Believe me. Sid. They're looking into nine specific violations. I don't want us to get burned. Look, I, I realize you have to deal with the LAU people on a day-to-day -day basis, but I don't. So, uh, you're gonna run it? I think we have to. That is one damn stupid move. You are gonna get burned. Bad. I'm warning you. Good morning. Hi. I see you ran the NCAA announcement. Why not? Sir, the Tribune is not investigating anyone. I can give you the telephone number of the NCAA in Kansas City. It's area code. City desk, Donovan. City desk? Who wrote the story on LAU? Well, let's say that some stories just write themselves. Just take my word for it, ma'am. We don't have anyone here in charge of canceling subscriptions. Uh, if I were City you, desk, I'd just Donovan. settle up with your newsboy. Well, one morning, you're just going to have to get up early. It's an announcement. We can't print a retraction of an announcement. City desk. Sir, if you say you're a man of God, I believe Look, you. there is nothing to retract. They're going ahead with the investigation. Watch your language, your grace. Do you believe this? It's been going on all morning. Yeah, I think it's kind of funny. Yeah, if you don't count the two bomb threats. Oh, they're just putting us on. I wish they were. Mary, will you have the switchboard handle all these crank calls? Huh? Oh, I see. They already are. They're just giving us the overflow. What? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
Uh, yeah, well, thanks, Mary. So far, the unofficial tally is disapproved the NCAA story 117. Approved? One. And that's only the beginning, Lou. We felt some of the pressure, too. Oh, have you had second thoughts? When someone uh, threatens to put a bomb in the men's room, I have second thoughts. A lot of crank calls. I wouldn't classify the people who called me as cranks. The chairman of the board of Anacon Industries phoned me from Paris. I've had calls from Sacramento, and one each from our four major advertisers. We're not investigating LAU. All we did was announce the NCAA was. Well, then why do you think we're getting this kind of reaction? Does it make any sense? Some people are reading it as a personal attack on Coach Deal. It's a we're number one syndrome. LAU could be the national champions this year. Yeah, well, circulation tells me we've lost 300 subscriptions in the last 36 hours. I think we can live with that. Oh, yes, gentlemen. That's roughly both your salaries. Well, we uh, can't become cheerleaders for LAU. Mr. Grant, I have a memo here from Sid Locke complaining about your moving in on a sports story. Not true. Lou gave me the story. I kicked it over to sports, and when they spiked it, I let Lou take it. Mr. Locke warned you not to print it. Yeah, that's true. Mrs. Pinchon, we can't be against hustling, manipulation, payola, crookedness on the front page, and for it on the sports page. No, of course we can't. You're absolutely right. <sighs> what is it about sports that creates fans that are so homicidal? No, I, I don't go to football games anymore because the people sitting around me are always yelling, kill the umpire, kill the umpire. I, I sit in the $12 seats. Kill the umpires in baseball. Yeah, well, there is an umpire in football, too, Mr. Hume. He's the second-ranking official. He positions himself behind the defensive line, and in my opinion, he has as good a chance of being killed as anybody. She has a point. Hello, gentlemen. If it's going to cost us 300 subscriptions to be right... I want to see some award-winning journalism. Yeah, well, Lou has Rossi out interviewing Coach Deal. Billy was an editor for the Daily Cougar, the LAU paper. I sent her over to the campus. Ilse's Belgian. She's the last episode in my ten-part series for the Daily Cougar on exchange students in athletics. The first nine were on Hungarian place kickers. <laughs> Tell me about this NCAA thing. How come the school paper's laying off it? It's not a very popular subject around here nowadays. When I was editor of this paper, we went after unpopular subjects. The administration kept shutting us down. Really? For the record, no. But they did confiscate two whole issues, and they shut down our offices for three days, supposedly to fumigate. <laughs> well, that was another time. Hardly anybody's in any of that radical stuff anymore. Why do I suddenly feel old? That was beautiful, Ilsa. Uh, I got your name. Now I know the paper's going to want your phone number. Ruth, uh, tell me about the public records you were going to check. We were going to do a big story on scholarships, but the jocks aren't allowed to talk to the press, not even us. Policy. Policy? The players can give us their name, rank, and serial number. After that, they chant, Coach Deal, Coach Deal, Coach Deal. I need somebody who will talk to me. No chance. There's an old newspaper adage. Look for the guy who's unhappy. There must be a disgruntled jock, somebody who thinks he should be the star but isn't. There is someone I know. He's really bitter. He was on a football scholarship and he lost it, so... You think he'll talk to me? His name is Rick Waterhouse. You know the new restaurant, The Treehouse? He works there. Great, thanks. Uh, did you ever do a story on him? No. How come? I'm one of the reasons he's bitter. So how come you won't let your players talk to the press? Isn't that being patronizing, a little overprotective? A matter of policy. It's not school policy, it's your policy. Yeah, and I want full credit for it. Look, I hardly have time to teach these young men football. I can't squeeze public relations into the curriculum. 
Even if I were qualified to instruct it. Come on, coach. You wrote the book. Hold my feet. A year ago, during a crucial game, one of our place kickers missed a field goal. In the locker room, two of your big-time reporters got on to his case. Now, the boy was in a highly emotional state, and he said it was because the holder, a longtime friend of his, had been carousing the night before. Do you know what the headline was? Holder gets kicks carousing. Now, the boy had three beers 15 hours before game time. Not that I approve. But for the rest of their lives, believe me, those two boys are going to pay for the excess of some unfeeling reporter. Doesn't the public have a right to know? There's no right to sanctify gossip. The usual complaint from LAU is that you're not getting enough space in the paper. The university is selling tickets. The Tribune is selling papers. The game needs the story. The story needs the game. So we should scratch each other's back. Don't you think that's what we do all the time? Well, I guess there has to be an element to that, sure, but let me ask you, in the case of this NCAA investigation... Hey, yo, excuse me. Coach. I have a class in silent prayer, and I'm late. You know what? I'm bitter. I lost my scholarship. Have you presented your sign to anyone? Oh, I mean, they got me where it's short, if you know what I mean. But I thought if you were injured that the school was out. Well, I wasn't incapacitated. I mean, I can still play. I've got uh, dishpan hands, but other than that... What? I, what happened? Uh, my freshman year, I did pretty good. But the Dallas Cowboys didn't have the hots for me or anything. So I knew I'd better go after my degree. Pre-season, my second year, I cracked a couple of ribs, and one of the coaches asked me if I'd redshirt. What does that mean? If I don't play any games the whole season, I still have another year of eligibility. But that gives you another year of college? I figured I could use it. Anyway, I get back to working out with the squad, and they start in needling me. If I hadn't been so dumb... This one assistant, Howie Becker, I must have been his full-time assignment, you know? What's wrong this time, Waterhouse? Are you a loser, Waterhouse? You lose your stomach, Waterhouse? Don't you dig collision sports, Waterhouse? Over and over and over. <laughs> I blew my cork. I chose Becker, but he wouldn't fight, so I called him every name in the book. Plus two. And they took your scholarship away for that? In the report, Becker spelled out every one of those pervert words. A coach has a thing about that kind of language. I shocked St. Deal. You think this was all a plot? If I hadn't been so dumb, I'd have picked up on it. Why? I mean, what was their point? Big schools are always griping. They need 15, 20 more scholarships. So, if one of the coaches doesn't think you're cutting it, then the pressure is murder. Do you think Mr. Deal was in on this? Well, he's the man, isn't he? Listen, there are so many hustles around here. Right now, they got this one kid on the red shirts, Henry Spencer. He's better than anybody on the first string backfield. He's here on a track scholarship. But the funny thing is, he's not running track. He's playing football. Why don't you check that one out? I never said I had a basketball scholarship. No, I'm not exactly crazy about what I've got. And Billy has what? An envious kid. Then get more. Billy, see if you can get an interview with this Henry Spencer. Maybe he'll talk to you. Now, Rossi, find out where he went to high school. See if he really is on a track scholarship. Get me all the events he ran. Times the works. Lou. Hmm? You didn't tell anyone over in sports, Sid Locke or anybody, that Mike talked to you. No, why? They're giving him the silent treatment. Garbage assignments, hoping he'll quit. Will he? I don't think so. I don't know what I can do. You want me to talk to Charlie? If you think it'll help. Sure. You hanging out with this guy? Mike? Mike. You have an abnormal interest in the love lives of the employees here, don't you? No, I wouldn't say... Maybe I do. There's nothing physical between Mike and me. That's what I figured. Why not? He seemed like kind of a cute guy. The Coach Deal Show. Ever seen it? 
No, it's against Gilligan's Island reruns. I thought tonight's show might be interesting. Mm -hmm. You know his guest. Film show White Laws outside speed. Now we know he has the raw talent and he's coachable. Mm-hmm. Listen, against a powerhouse AM offensive line. Are you going with that three down pro defense again? Uh, we can't give you that information, Sid. Your paper's investigating us. Ah, yes. There's a persistent rumor that you shared your lemonade with an outstanding high school prospect back in 1974. Oh boy, they really got the cutes. As an old friend, Coach, I advise you to watch yourself. Our city editor is an old Minnesota fan. And you know, those Big Ten guys really have it in for us out here on the West Coast. Looks like you've been fingered. Mm -hmm. So I get a few phone calls. I think I can handle that. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. That for you. Maybe you uh, better get an answering service. Lou Grant here. Now that was too personal. What'd he say? He said he was gonna kill me. for me? No, sir, Mr. Grant. I'm not looking for you. Is that my paper? It could be. It was laying out there. Yeah, yeah. Come on, let's have it. Look, I'm Frank Johnson, Overland Security Police. I'm here to protect you. Against who? Cranks, weirdos. See, isn't that against whom? I mean, I know you're an editor. Against whom? I've been taking business English at night. <laughs> you're doing great, Frank. <laughs> Thank you. Come on, I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Okay. You want an English muffin? You got any regular bread? What do you want, rye, whole wheat, raisin? No regular, huh? Whole wheat regular. You know, Mr. Grant, your paper ought to lay off Coach Deal. Huh? Well, football is one of the few straight things this country's still got going. Uh-huh. And Coach Steele isn't a bad guy. He doesn't even uh, drink. Oh. You know, we could go all the way this year. I mean, number one. You really think LAU is that good? I saw him beat Oregon, and, man, they were sensational. What a bench. They're at least three deep in every position. Hmm. You ever play? Yeah, I played a little ball. I was a linebacker for two years at Maryland State. Then I had to do a year and a half in Vietnam, and... That was it. Hmm. What'd you get your degree in? I didn't. I mean, I never graduated. Got you ready for night school, though, right? Hey, I don't have any gripes. How else is a guy like me gonna get a college education? Yeah. You know, this wheat bread isn't all bad. Maybe I'll start eating this health food stuff. How about this wheat germ stuff? You take that, too? Well, hey, Lou. Hey, Mike. Say hello to Frank Johnson, Overland Security. Mike Kessler. How you doing, uh, Mike? I heard you got some threatening calls. Frank's been babysitting me. That heavy? Frank tells me that the chances of anybody bumping me off are down to one in five. Right, Frank? That's right. One in five, huh? In the composing room, they're saying you're even money. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> I heard they've been giving you a hard time. I'm in solitary. Cutting and pasting. No assignments, no rewrites. Cut and paste, that's my day. Sounds pretty bad. Not if you don't mind calling the copy boy, sir. <laughs> Go on. Are you Henry Spencer? Yes. I'm Billy Newman. I'm with the Tribune. Can I talk to you? <laughs> no, I don't talk to any press people. We've already talked to the NCAA. Well, you got your story. What do you need me for? We'd like to be fair to you. Why not?
Can I uh, get you something like tea or coffee? No, thanks. I'll take a seat. Thank you. Has the NCAA been around? They're coming up behind me. I hear the footsteps. You know that for sure? They've been talking to my Aunt Clara. She's up in Fresno. My grandmama, she's back in Florida. She called. They've been talking to her, too. Will you tell me? I mean, for the record. You don't want to get yourself jammed. Lady, I know when I'm jammed, and I'm jammed. Why don't I tell you what we know for sure, and uh, if you want, you can fill me in. Okay. What you holding? You went to Harrison High School for one year. The school can't tell us where you came from because they've misplaced your records. Oh, that is so bad. And there's something weird about your scholarship. Outside of that, I'm the cleanest man in town, right? <laughs> According to the local papers, you were a good sprinter, but a lot of kids had better times than you. None of them were approached. Why did LAU recruit you? And uh, how is it that a football player's on a track scholarship and isn't on the track team? Mysterious, ain't it? Turn that off a second. You figure the NCAA has all that? Well, it took us a couple of days to run it down, if you want to believe that we're smarter than they are. Oh, I hear footsteps. Okay, okay, to start the tape. I tell you, coming out from under this ain't all bad. I was 15 years old and playing my first year for this high school back in Florida, and I was good. Well, halfway through the season, I got busted, breaking and entering. Were you guilty? Well, let's see. When they apprehended me, I was stepping out of this warehouse. My arms was full of this 19-inch color TV. It was about 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Man, was I ever framed. First arrest? First felony. Put in my time at work camp. You know, I always thought I was the baddest dude alive. Oh, man, bad. I couldn't even qualify. That was all in Florida? Yeah. How did you end up out here? There was this assistant coach at Mile High School. He played ball for LAU. He put me in touch with a man who put me in touch with one of those wealthy LAU alumni types, you know. That man was slick. He took care of everyone and everything. <laughs> We're right on the story. I heard. You were right. Uh, there must be some satisfaction. <sighs> Being right is supposed to give you some sort of inner glow. You feeling an inner glow? Not yet, but give me a few minutes. Are you still being rough on you in Toy Town? By the time the 84 Olympics get here, they may let me cover field hockey. <laughs> Women's field hockey. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a single, Joe. Dennis Goodrich is quitting the end of the month. You're gonna have a job at City Side. Thanks. But I'm gonna tough it out. Sports is my thing. If they tie the can to me. Teddy Talbot's a fair man. I figure that's what I got going for me. If I can help. Thanks. What's this going to do to Coach Deal? Yeah, I'll never lay a glove on him. Hmm. He just gives the blessing. His assistants do the dirty work. He makes a point of knowing not McKinnis. what they do. Hmm. Yes, he is. All right. Lou? Some chick named Pinchon wants to see you. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Grant. Mrs. Pinchon? Uh, I I know that this is a matter of some importance. But something, um, Mr. Locke understands, something vital has come up in an advertising meeting that requires my immediate presence. So if you gentlemen will excuse me, I'll be right back. Oh, uh, should we, No, no, uh, no, you uh, stay right where you are. I won't be but a minute.
What's this about? It's about my not wanting to be on the same newspaper as you. I'm very sorry to hear that. Because I'm not sure which one of us she'd pick. How many papers are you syndicated in? 102. Very sorry to hear that. You saw our copy, huh? What do you think you've accomplished? Do you want to tell me that's not a good story? You want to tell me it's not true? I'll tell you what's true. It's the losers against the winners. Bob Deal is a winner. And a lot of untalented little punks are trying to shoot him down. So we overlook the fix? Payola, forgery, corrupting our high school administrators? Who the hell do you think you are? The voice of the Tribune? The conscience of the journalistic fraternity? We have a lot of readers out there, common people, working stiffs. And they want a winner. They want to be number one. And I'm not so sure they're wrong. Oh, come on. Don't raise up the readers like a banner. We're not talking about them. We're talking about you, Sid. Okay. You want to talk about me? I've been putting a blank sheet of paper in a machine five days a week, 50 weeks a year, for better than 30 years. I know what it is to strike out, but I know something you don't know. I know what it is to hit one out of the park. And I used to love to see you do it, Sid. First thing every day, summer, winter, I'd run to get the morning paper, because who would give me the word? And the way it is, is tough. Hard nose, hold and hit, sneak punching. They never told you, Cherry? Ah, here it comes, huh? Everyone else does it. Winning is everything. Nice guys finish last. Wonderful. I'll mail you the Good Sportsmanship of the Year award. Ah, oh, come on, Sid. You don't have to be some kind of paranoid hustler to be a winner to be number one. I'll try to remember that. And, and another thing, if you want to get in touch with the common people, the working stiff, why don't you try picking up a check sometime? On my side, reporters don't get free meals by dropping the name of a restaurant in a column. Oh, I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. You know, you should be working for a newspaper in the land of Oz. Well, you try to cover up for munchkins who shave points. I remember reading about a tennis pro who made a call against himself and lost a big match. A ranking golfer who found he'd been using illegal clubs and turned himself in. A guy in a yacht race who disqualified himself because he'd had to turn his engine on to avoid an accident. Oh, boy, I guess you'll believe anything. No, not anything. I just believe those stories because they were written by someone I really respected. Sid Locke. Forgive the interruption. Now, Mr. Locke. What's the problem? Well, I thought I had a big problem, but uh, Lou and I worked it out. Excuse me. <laughs> you know, it's really lucky that you had that advertising meeting. Sid was going to tell you that it was either him or me. It's really lucky you have a publisher who's smart enough to invent advertising meetings whenever she feels they may be useful. Who would you have picked? Me, right? Me, huh? You bet your boots. <laughs> <laughs> 